In this video, I'm gonna go through knee palpation for therapists so you can know what you're feeling for when you're doing your palpating and why it is that you're doing that. So knee palpation wise, anteriorly, we can palpate around the joint for swelling. So we can palpate laterally and just around the joint for swelling. We can feel for heat, redness, and anything of that nature around the joint. We can actually measure around the joint if we wanted to for a objective marker of the joint. We can palpate the patella, so we can feel the patella, and we can slide medially and laterally on the patella. We can both feel superiorly at the patella and inferiorly, and just see how much movement that patella has. Clark's test is a compression test for the patella femoral joint. So Clark's test, you want to take a compression through the patella and see whether the patient feels pain underneath that patella and it's familiar to their pain. What you can then also do if they're not getting any pain with this test is to ask the patient to contract their quad um, by squeezing down into the bed as this test is being performed and that then that will be uh, an indication of a positive Clark test. So if they get pain when you're creating compression and they're, they're contracting the quad, then that would be a positive Clark's test. We can also palpate the patella tendon at the tibial tuberosity, which is the prominent bony point past the knee joint, distal to the knee joint, which would be positive with Oshkos slatus or apophysitis of that area. We can flex the knee to 90 degrees and palpate the patella tendon. And then also we can palpate the joint line, which will check for meniscal pathology. The anterior horn of the meniscus can be palpated both laterally and also medially. The medial collateral ligament can be palpated between the medial femoral condyle to the medial tibial condyle. And the lateral collateral ligament can be palpated between the lateral femoral condyle to the head of the fibula laterally. The anterolateral ligament originates from the lateral femoral condyle and then attaches to the lateral tibial condyle. We can also palpate through the pes anserine region, and this is a region through the anteromedial side of the tibia in line with the tibial tuberosity. Um, this is an area of interest because gracilis sartorius and semitendinosis attach here, um, and they also uh, overlie a bursa, the pes anserine bursa, uh, or pes anserinus bursa. So you can get pes anserinus bursitis or tendinitis of the muscles previously stated. Posteriorly, we can look at our hamstring tendons. We look at the semimembranosis posterior to the aspect of the medial tibial condyle. Biceps fem inserts into the head of the fibula and the lateral condyle. And we can feel for the hamstrings in general through here. If you resist the uh, leg, so if you hold there, okay, don't let me pull you down you can feel the tendons of the hamstrings more easily when you do this. Gastrots can be palpated onto the medial head, onto the posterior aspect of the medial femoral condyle, and the lateral head onto the lateral aspect of the femoral condyle. You can also palpate into the muscle bellies, the calf, pop the teal space, it's located centrally, and posteriorly to the knee, and this is where you would find Baker's cyst. Also medial and lateral posterior horn menis meniscus injuries can be found in here. The tibial nerve runs through the popliteal space. If you get neuro signs, this could be an irritation into here. If you're a physio or therapist looking to get better, then press the subscribe button, click the bell icon, and that way you'll see all the, our current videos that are coming out, and they're all designed around helping you to get better. If you enjoyed this video, then click this one here, because you are gonna love it.